Welcome back, this is Gaming with Rob. Today we are going to enter the world of Mana Lords and talk about development points. So buckle up and get ready. You can actually get a maximum of six development points at this current stage in Mana Lords depending on what game or what type of game you're playing within it. You access them just at the top here, along with the policies and the production, which is yet to be uh, launched on the game. As requested from one of the comments in my last video, I'm taking a shine to the game today and we're taking it in the beautiful sunshine. The last time I filmed, I believe it was raining on a few comments. Why don't you uh, film when it's sunny? <laughs> I guarantee you doing this one, uh, I'm sure it will start hammering down as we're in October, but let's get on with the development points. So I think the best place to start with development points is actually coming out and having a look at the various plots. What you generally get with these games um, is you get a few rich deposits. So if we have a look at this, middle section here, the one with the crown on, so wild animals is a rich deposit and the clay is a rich deposit also and then you have the other various ones over here look you have clay deposit which is rich uh, and uh, wild animals which is rich and let's take another one over here we have iron deposits and berries which is rich so it's always good to see what's available I'm hoping I've got one. Let's have a quick look. If you have one land where you only have one rich deposit, so as an example, this one here is stone, but there is only one crown, so only one rich deposit, what you should see, and let's just go in and take a look, what you should see then on this one, if we go to fertile, because it is only one rich deposit, if you look at the barrier of this land and where it is, you've actually got really, really fertile land. So you either get rich deposits on the production, such as iron or clay, or in terms of food, berries and animals. Um, but if you only have one rich deposit, which in this case is stone, you get very, very fertile land. And that's just something I wanted to mention because I've seen it in the comments previously. How come uh, I've only got one rich deposit and there's other players that have got more than one? So you get a maximum of two. That's just something I wanted to point out because it was a question that was asked. When you start a new game, it's definitely worth thinking about the plot. If you're given a plot... Um, that has rich fertile land, but you're more interested in building armies and, and killing the next neighbor in city, let's say, uh, then maybe that isn't for you. Perhaps you're really looking for um, maybe the stone or the iron as an example. So uh, don't worry if you get a bad plus land, just restart your game. Um, I've got three different games on the go at the moment, and that's purely because of the YouTube channel I've got and trying to figure out the best mechanisms to bring you the best content that I can. So if we come back into the development areas, you can see it's split into four different sections and we'll go through them one by one and uh, I'll give you obviously the knowledge that I have. The first one I'm gonna class as um, almost the knights, the realm, the armory um, kind of uh, uh, development plot down here. You see there you have the basic uh, armory making, which is obviously useful if you're looking to dominate your opponents uh, by way of fist, if you like. Um, I've not explored this route, so this is probably the least route I can talk about, but one of the things that is very, very significant is the charcoal burning. As you know, um, if you have 50 houses, each house will require one firewood, uh, per month in the winter time as I've mentioned previously that doubles So you'll actually need a minimum of two in January as an example If you've got 50 houses you need 100 firewood to get your entire population through the month of January If it's September you'll only need one So where charcoal comes into place. It's the only type product that you actually double down on if you unlock the charcoal uh, one firewood actually produces two charcoal. So you basically double the amount of fuel you have for your families. 
And it's the only thing at this point in the game that actually doubles up. So it's definitely worth exploring if you do struggle with your uh, fuel for your families, particularly through the winter time. Charcoal is one that m you may consider opening uh, because you get that double efficiency. The other one to mention on this one uh, that I wish I'd had is the upgrade for deep mining. This enables uh, the buildings to extract uh, resource indefinitely um, when placed over a deposit. So I just quickly close my and I come out. The mistake I've made on this land is with my clay as an example, I've mined the death out of it and I've got none left. If I had opened that particular option within my development area, I could have placed that over my clay and had infinite mining. So definitely something to think about uh, as you're uh, exploring your different development areas. Of course, one of the other advantages of having uh, infinite resource is the ability to sell and make money, which is another key feature in Manor Lords that's definitely worth exploring. So, yeah, for me, it's probably a mistake. I probably should have gone down the... Uh, uh, charcoal burning to really unlock the deep mining. Both of those are fantastic development areas that you, it's definitely worth you considering. If we move across to the right hand side then I guess this would be the trade kind of route. Um, they haven't actually named the development areas so these are just things that I'm making up. You've got the foreign supplies. Now the foreign supplies basically for the uh, food uh, supplies and the firewood cart as it's mentioned in here you basically you can open up um, trade routes uh, so this is the trade logistics and it says establishing a trade route cost 50% less now this is interesting let's go and find my uh, trading post which is just here if I open up this trading post let's go to something like um, yeah, let's take this as an example. So I've got a lot of hides at the moment, 74. And I'm saying that I want a surplus of 50. Um, and I'm exported only. So to open up that trade route, I actually paid 200 regional wealth. If I'd unlocked in my development area this trade logistics there, of course, it would have halved exactly what I uh, paid, which was 200. So I would have paid just 100 wealth. For me, though, uh, because I have got so many hides, yes, I get four uh, regional wealth per hide. For me, I'll make that money back quite quickly. The other ones I've opened were these here, the stone and the planks from memory. Somebody correct me, please from memory they were 50 regional wealth and very easily making that back with simply 50 stone or 25 planks make that back so because i don't intend to open a lot of trade routes uh, i've got one there two on the first screen i think that's it it is yeah so i've only actually opened up three trade routes uh, costing me 200 and 50 300 which i've already made back so for me it wasn't worth opening that trade route however if your gameplay is all about trade it's definitely uh, worth opening the trade logistics if you open the trade logistics go ahead and open better deals as well uh, which basically reduces the foreign import uh, tariff by half um, which makes trading with free merchants far more profitable. If you're gonna open trade logistics, make sure you open better deals. It is definitely a good way to go. But what I've actually chosen uh, to go down in this particular gameplay is the, let's call it the food route, uh, if you like. So uh, yeah, the first one I opened was orchard, uh, orchardry. Um, now there's a little bit of a debate about this because it takes three full years for your um, trees to be fully grown and get a very good yield from them. I was prepared to do that. Um, let's quickly have a look at my food now. As you can see, I've got 143 apples at the moment. 
84 vegetables, which I come on to, um, and six eggs. Um, yes, it is a bit of a pain in the rear, if I'm being completely honest, waiting those two years and then third year get the fruits of your labour. But all I did is just use chickens. I just absolutely had loads and loads of chickens, producing lots and lots of eggs, a couple of vegetables, um, and I was prepared to wait for the apples. And now, let's have a look at, uh, here we go, I've got seven months worth of food. Bearing in mind, I've got uh, 50 plus families on this particular game. Um, if you haven't watched my annual royal tax, you can see the annual royal tax up here is in red. Make sure you check out my last video, which talks about that and how to overcome this issue. Right, so let's get back into the development plots then. The next one was sheep breeding. Again, it's one that I've particularly opened. And it's fairly simple. All you do is create a pasture, um, get a couple of sheep, if you open that development area, then literally it's been happening every single month I get a new sheep. Uh, and it's far better in my eyes than going to your livestock and purchasing them. Um, sheep obviously give you uh, wool. Um, and I'm hoping in the future, as one of the subscribers in my last video commented, I hope in time you're actually going to be able to get some meat from it and even possibly some milk and cheese. That would be a, a good development stage and possibly one they'll bring up uh, later on in the game. So the other one is heavy ploughing, which is the third one I've locked out of my six. You upgrade, add a ploughing station, enables employing an oxen at the farmhouse for significantly faster plough of large fields as well as bringing crops back uh, to store storage more efficiently because I'm all about food production of course it absolutely makes sense for me to open these three and that goes on to some more development points at a later stage and over on the right hand side then um, I guess this is some of the more natural food so we've got uh, trapping which enables hunters to skillfully lay traps and it basically doubles your food so as an example, I've not got a great one to show you, but let's just, where are they? There they are there. Okay, so I can get a, a, a maximum, let's say, of 20 meat or 20 animals. If I'd unlock that development plot, that would have doubled to 40. Again, if we go out and look at some of the others, that also has got 20. That's got, where's my rich deposit there? So that one's got 40 wild animals. Of course, that development would unlock 80 which is really pretty good so i'd say if you do start with uh, wild animals as a rich deposit then that could be one development area that you could explore but for me it just didn't sit right uh, with the game i wanted to play much the same as the forest management it actually doubles the capacity so have a look at the land that you're on have a think about the game plan you want to plot and play and then if these suit you, um, then go ahead and get that done. And the last one is beekeeping. Now this is one that I'm actually quite interested in. So workers collect uh, honey. Every region can sustain up to two uh, aspirees by default. Placing more will not increase the yield. So that is quite good. It gives you honey. For me, it just doesn't give you enough. It doesn't sustain the amount of families that I think my town and village is going to grow to. I guess for early game it would be good. I'm quite interested in this one uh, where it actually enables the beekeepers to also collect wax um, and see where that actually takes the gameplay. Of course this is still really uh, in alpha stage at the moment but they're the development plots that I have opened. Let me know in the comment section what you have opened and how your gameplay is going. Okay, so uh, this is Gaming with Rob. I just want to finish up by saying that uh, I should have actually mentioned with the sheep breeding that you do actually get lamb offspring with the sheep breeding as well. Um, and these things literally breed like rabbits. So it's a very, very good way of increasing your sheep numbers uh, and also in ke uh, keeping up with your wool count. Okay, so that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this very short video. 
uh, smash subscribe if you like Manor Lords, and I'll see you over on the next one. Don't forget to check out my Manor Lords playlist, and I'm sure there's something from everyone there. If you're struggling with certain parts of the game, drop me a comment and I will find a solution for you. Take care for now.